This is Geometry Lesson 7-2, Drawing Triangles. In Lesson 1, we spent time drawing triangles with given information. At the end of drawing all of those triangles, you then analyzed to see which triangles would be were given enough information to determine that every triangle with that information would look exactly the same. And four different situations came about. And those are the four theorems that we're going to discuss today. Remember when I say S, that refers to a side. When I say A, that refers to an angle. And so the acronyms SAS, SSS, ASA, and AAS stand for combinations of measures of corresponding sides and angles in two triangles. And those acronyms are ones that, ha if given that information, it's sufficient for the congruence of triangles. So we have theorems, and in the reading from page 386 in your UCSMP textbook all the way to page 390, there are proofs that support these theorems. And what I want to do in this lesson is just is discuss the theorems and how they work. You can go ahead and do the in your reading to discover how they come about and how they can be proved mathematically. The first congruence theorem that we're going to discuss is side-side-side congruence theorem, and we use the acronym SSS to, dis to shorten our, our theorem's name. So SSS, congruence theorem, states that if in two triangles three sides of one are congruent to three sides of the other, then the triangles are congruent. So as you can see here in the diagram, we have the two triangles. Uh, BA was congruent to side DE, so that was one set of sides. AC is congruent to DF, that's our second set. And BC is congruent to FE, and that is our third set of sides. So given three sets of sides, we can then say that those two triangles are congruent to each other. And any triangle with that same, with those same side lengths would also be congruent. The second congruence theorem that we'll discuss in this lesson is the side angle side congruence theorem and we use the acronym SAS to stand for that. So the wording of the theorem is if in two triangle two sides and the included angle of one are congruent to two sides and the included angle of the other then the triangles are congruent. Now with this I often have students say well how do I know it's side angle side and it's not SSA or something like that. Well, the way that you use that is you look for the two sides that you are given and there's a piece of key wording here in this theorem that helps us realize that it would be side angle side. As you can see in the acronym, the angle is in between the two sides. So when looking at your triangles to see if you in fact have an SAS situation, the angle that you are given has to be, be included in the two sides that you know are congruent, to the two sets of sides that you know are congruent. So AC is part of angle C and BC is part of angle C. So that means it is an included angle. Same thing here, YZ is part of angle Z and XZ is part of angle Z. So that is an included angle. I like to say the angle sandwiched between the two sides and that would be a situation for SAS. So triangles with this given information these sets of informations would be congruent to each other. The third congruence theorem in this lesson is called ASA, Angle Side Angle Congruence Theorem. And it states, if in two triangles, two angles and the included side of one are congruent to two angles and the included side of the other, then the two triangles are congruent. So in this situation, instead of having angles sandwiched, so to speak, in between the the sides, we have the side sandwiched between the two angles. So here they use the word included again. You notice that the side length that you are given to be congruent in both triangles is between the two angles that you are also given. So side NM is a part of angle N and a part of angle M in, in this first triangle and side RG is a part of angle R and a part of angle G. So that's what it means to be an included side. And so if you are given information where an angle, a side, and another angle, this set is congruent in both triangles, then you can say your triangles are congruent to each other. The last congruence theorem in this lesson that we'll discuss is angle-angle side congruence theorem. And it states if in two triangles, 
if in two triangles two angles and a non-included side are one of one are congruent respectively to two angles and a corresponding non-included side of the other then the triangles are congruent so this is the one this is the triangle congruence theorem that students struggle with the most because they aren't sure if it's angle side angle or angle angle side so when we discuss this I'm going to really talk about the difference between how do you know the difference between the two so in this situation you're given two angles again but the side that you are given is not in between the two angles it's a non included side so that's how you know if it's an AAS or an SAS. So this side is only a part of angle A and in order to be ASA it has to be a part of both. So we say angle, angle, side. So here we have two sets of angles that are congruent to each other and then the third piece is a side. So that is angle, angle, side. So this concludes the four congruence theorems that we are going to discuss in this lesson. Then there's one other theorem in this lesson that I'd like to discuss and that's called the third angle theorem. That theorem states that if two triangles have if in if two triangles have two pairs of angles congruent then their third pair of angles is congruent. Let's think about that. If I were to have a triangle and I was given two sets of angles. We know using the triangle sum theorem that I could find the third angle. So if these two angles are congruent in another triangle, the third pair would also be congruent because it would have to have the same measurement there as well. So that's what that third angle theorem is. And you will use that sometimes when trying to find missing angle measures in your triangles. I'd like you to stop the video at this time and try to work through the examples found on the next page. When you have finished trying the examples, you may start the video again and I will go through each of the problems with you. All right, let's see how you did. Once the strategy that I use to be successful here is I drew pictures of my triangles because sometimes when you see the given information, you can't always tell where things are going to to be so I draw the picture first. So I said FG was 8 inches, GH is 6, and G, angle G is 72. And since I can see that the angle is an included angle, it's part of side FG and so part of side GH, I can use the acronym or the congruence theorem SAS that is the sufficient sufficient conditions to say my triangles are congruent. So these tri triangles drawn this way would be all congruent to each other with this given information. Look at number two. Angle F is 74, angle G is 81, and angle H is 25. Now, even though we have all three angle sets being given to us, angle, angle, angle is not a sufficient condition to state that our triangles are congruent, so this is a no. The third one, FG is 18, GH is 13, and FH is 9. So in this situation, we're giving all three sets of sides in this triangle. And if someone were to draw another triangle with that given information, it would be congruent because we have the SSS congruence there. So number three is yes. In numbers four through six, you're to use the diagram to tell which triangles are congruent. You're to write a congruence statement. Now, writing the congruence statement is a piece that many students skip over, so just remember that this is something that would be on a test. I would ask you to write a congruence statement that indicates corresponding vertices and states the theorem that justifies the congruence. So, in this situation, I have two sets of angles given to me and a side, and this is a non-included side. It's not sandwiched between my two angles. So, and it, the information given on the other triangle is, is the same. So we can say we have an angle, angle, side situation here. So we can use that as our justification. And so then we need to write a congruence statement. So to do that, I always like to, to kind of follow a similar pattern on both triangles. So here I'm going my short side to the 90 degree angle and then on to the other angle I know, on to the side I know. So B to C to A, let me rewrite that. So B to C to A and Q to F to N. So I would be matching up the correct vertices. You can name it any way you like, just making sure that you match the corresponding vertices. The next triangle states that I have a set of sides here, 
set of sides here, but it appears that I only have two sets of sides. But we have a property, it's called the reflexive property of congruence, and we can, if we have a side of the triangle that's shared in both, we can say that it's congruent in both. So this would be in a situation where I'd have a side, side, side congruence theorem to justify that these two triangles are congruent. And I w could write it, I could write it as triangle Z X W. So basically I went around my triangle side one to the two to the three. So I'd want to do that in the same order. Z Y to W. Then the next set of triangles appears to have a set of sides, an angle, and a side. And this angle is the included angle. It's sandwiched between the two sides. It's part of both sides. So I could say that triangle P E N is congruent to triangle P A T and I'm using the side angle side congruence theorem to do so. All right, the last question says in the triangles at the right A B is congruent to F G and A C is congruent to F H. So let's mark those on here. A B is congruent to F G and A C is congruent to F H. What a different additional information would, you, would allow you to conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FGH by the side, side, side congruence theorem. So that means we need three sets of sides. So I know that I need GH to be congruent to BC. Let's look at the other one. I need a side angle side. So that means the angle needs it to be in between the two sides. So that would mean that it would have to be angle F on this triangle and angle A on this triangle. So I would need to have the congruence statement. Angle F is congruent to angle A. This concludes Lesson 7-2.